Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to give you a glimpse of my landscape workflow. So you could take an image that looks like this and end up with an image that looks like this. I'm going to be processing this image start to finish. I didn't practice ahead of time, so you may see me go down a rabbit hole, back my way out, and try something else. That's really my normal processing routine. I often will try something out, find I don't like it, scrap it, and go in a different direction. Now, this image was shot at Letchworth State Park. It's a park in New York State, not far from where I live. If you're interested in all the gear info, settings info, and exposure info, all that will be listed in the description below the video. So if you're wondering where I focused, where I drew exposure from, uh, what the f-stop and shutter speeds were, all that stuff will be listed below the video. Also, below the video, I'll have a promo code where you could save 33% on my On One Photo Raw presets. Now, I mentioned before, when I process an image, I like to crop first. A lot of photographers like to crop last. It really doesn't matter. Uh, it really doesn't matter at all. There's no written rule here. I just like to do it early in my workflow. I like to see what I'm going to end up with as soon as possible. So I'm going to go right to the crop tool. And along the top, we have the tool attributes. Now, as far as straightening the image, this is a tough image to straighten. We kind of have a sloping tree line that slopes from the uh, top higher part on the right to the lower part on the left but then this train trestle goes the other way like upper left to lower right or is that i don't know what that is the bridge goes from the upper left to the lower right and it's really hard to gauge because this right bank is higher than the left bank so i'm just going to assume it's straight really and then at the end maybe i'll straighten it a little bit if i need to uh, along those lines also as far as cropping is I like to stay, this is again personal preference, I like to stay in a ratio that is congruent with the types of printing paper that is available, meaning I don't like to do a free from free form crop and just like pull in on sides and make it a really odd ratio because if I ever down the line want to print the image, I'm going to either get borders on my image or I'm going to have to get some paper and cut the paper to spec and then get a mat for that paper so it could fit in a frame the way, you know. So it's really a hassle if you don't uh, crop to a standard ratio. If you click on this little drop down right here, you can see all the different standard ratios. I prefer either one to one, two to three, or four by five. And for this image, as I look at it, there's really a lot of unnecessary real estate on either side. Uh, there, there, I mean, this was, you know, spring. The trees aren't in full bloom yet. Uh, this is a tremendous scene in the fall, but unfortunately I was here in April. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of trees that aren't really alive yet. The, really, the main interest is in the middle of the image. So I'm going to go to a 4x5 crop. That'll give me a standard 8x10 print that's borderless, 16x20, stuff like that. So we'll go there. Now, when I do that, if I just leave it as is, I'm cutting off this little piece of waterfall on the far right. So I'm going to drag the image this way a little bit, see if I could try to incorporate that. Now it kind of puts the river and the two waterfalls, the main waterfalls off center, the bridge off center. I'll see what this looks like. Maybe down the line, I'll come back in and recrop it if I don't like it, but let's just try it right like that. And maybe once I start the processing, it either will bloom into beautiful detail or I'm not going to like it. And I'll come back in and recrop. So I'm going to click apply to take this crop. So there it is. Now I'm going to jump right over. I'm in the develop module. I'm going to go to tone and color right away. What I'll do is I'll look at the image. What's scre the screaming need of this image? Well, it's kind of flat and dark. So I need contrast. I got to do something with this darkness. I don't like adding contrast early in my workflow. I kind of borrow my processing strategy from film grading or video grading. When a videographer shoots video, they often will shoot as flat as possible. It's called like a log setting, a log file. And it's, they want it as flat as can be. And that way, in post-production, they're able to do more to it. They, they'll minimize noise. They could remove noise easier in a flat image or flat video. And then they could process it any way they want. They have more um, options with a flat image. 
So early in my workflow, I'll make the image even flatter. So we have a bright sky, dark trees. The darkness is kind of catching my uh, uh, attention. I'm going to go to shadows and open those up right away. So I'm actually opening shadows up. I'm making the image a little flatter. So borrowing from my videographer friends. Now I will come to highlights and bring those down a little bit. So I'm bringing the highlights more towards midtones and I'm bringing the shadows more towards midtones. So I'm in effect making the image flatter. So that's what I do early. If I need to do something with midtones, I'd adjust those as well. But I think actually those are all right. If exposure was really way off, I would do exposure as well. And I should add, you notice I didn't do any profile yet. The image as it was, was just so flat and, you know, muddy, I guess, for lack of a better term, that if I did add a profile to it, it wouldn't uh, really be representative of what I'm going to end up with yet. So I'm going to uh, stall with the profile right now, but I will do that in a moment. Now, what I will do now is I'll start to bring in some of that um, depth tonal depth to the image with the blacks and whites slider by getting a black and white point. That's going to add contrast to the image. Now I'm going to hold the J key in when I adjust the white slider. That way I could best find where I'm starting to clip the whites. And I noticed in my videos, the software I use for the video, it's going to show when I press in the J key, but it will disappear after a moment. Just know that I'm holding the J key in the entire time I'm adjusting this white slider. So I'm pressing in the J key now, and I'm adjusting the white slider to the right. And I'm going to keep adjusting it until the brighter parts of the image start to have red come in. And you can see the waterfalls have red, and the sky on the left, and a little bit in the middle, has red. My preferred way to get the white point is to back that off then, until all that red disappears. That's the way I adjust the white point. So right there, I don't see any red anywhere. Similarly, I'll do the same for the blacks. I'm going to press in the J key in and hold it in. Click on the black slider and move that to the left until I see blue come in. You can see now I'm getting blues on the cliffs. I like to have a little bit of blue show through. That means I'm clipping the blacks. That's just my preferred way to do it. You could do it any way you like. I prefer to have some absolute black in my image. I'm crushing the blacks. Uh, for me, that adds, especially in landscape shots, a little more tonal depth. Now for a portrait, I wouldn't do that. A head and shoulder shot, not at all. But for a landscape image, I like that. It adds that tonal depth to the shot. Now you can see I reintroduced some contrast just using those two sliders. Now I'll jump up to camera profiles and take a look at those. The on one standard profile is pretty flat and not very um, saturated. But I'll hover over the others. There's on one landscape. You can see that's got more contrast and has more color. Portrait, vivid, vivid is very similar landscape neutral. Then the camera profiles, there's landscape, kind of like that one. Neutral, portrait, standard, vivid. All right, I kind of liked uh, on one landscape and on one vivid. Let's go with on one landscape. So that has added even more contrast to my shot. So there's before and there's after. All right, now, I'm going to jump down. I think the white balance is okay. I'm not going to do anything there. Um, I'm going to just go to saturation and push that up a little bit. I'm not going to do anything with vibrant saturations more than enough. And I'm not going to go too far. If I want to add more saturation to the image, I'll do that in the effects module. But right now I want to get a good base of an image to bring over to effects to do things I really want to do there. Now there's a tiny bit of haze, I think, in the shot. So I'm going to go to the haze slider and just see if I move that to the left. Now that's going to add more contrast. But I, I just want to try to just get rid of that haze a little bit. Sometimes I like haze, sometimes I don't. For this image, I don't think I want any haze. So I think I'm done for now with the tone and color part of the develop module. I may come back and readjust something. Now I mentioned many times I don't like to do sharpening and noise reduction in the develop module. I prefer to do that in the effects module because you have more control and there, it's really more powerful in the effects module. So I'm going to turn that right off. Then I'm going to go to lens correction and make sure it's found my lens and you can see it did. So I'm good to go there and I don't need to do anything with transform. Uh, there's no buildings or upright or squares or straight verticals or horizontals in the shot. So I don't need to do anything there. So really, I'm going to hop right over into the effects module. Now, if I had any um, 
sensor spots or anything, I'd probably get rid of those now, but I don't. So we're gonna head over to the effects module. And there's a lot of different effects I love, and I'll try them on every image. I may not use them on every image. And then there's sometimes I'll go off on or that rabbit hole I talked about and try something different. So right away though, when I go to the effects module, because I didn't reduce noise and sharpen in the develop module, I like to reduce noise right away. It's best to reduce noise early in your workflow. You'll just find that it's easier to remove when it's early in your workflow. If you start adding a bunch of effects, you're going to enhance noise quite often and it's gonna be more difficult to remove. Now, really for this image, there's really no noise because I shot it at ISO 64 and if I zoom in, there really isn't noise. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention it. So we're gonna assume there's a little noise here. So I'd zoom in. I go to add filter and I go to noise reduction, which is right here. Then typically what I like to do is I go to the drop down and I just hover over the different settings to see if one of these presets does the best job. In this case, let's go with subtle, which happens to be there as well. And like color noise is way too high. I don't think there's any color noise in this. So I, I would pull that down anyways. In most cases, I, I have color noise between 10 and 25 on almost all my cameras. I don't find them to get that much color noise uh, with all the lenses I use. Luminance will leave at 20 for this image. But as I mentioned, um, I don't really have a lot of noise. So that's the way I do it. I rarely will use the apply to just like to apply it to the sky or whatever. I kind of just do it early in my workflow and have it uh, go everywhere. And I could bring back, if it softened the image too much, I could re rescue it later with sharpening and or um, dynamic contrast. And I will do those later in my workflow. Now, one filter I really like is the sunshine filter. And I add it quite often. And I'll do that early in my workflow as well. Because, I'm going to add it, quite often when you add the sunshine filter, what it's going to do, it's going to blow out your highlights a little bit. And if you look down here, at this waterfall. I'm going to turn this off. You can see there's some detail now and if I turn it on you can see how it really kind of blew out the waterfall a little bit and I find that it often will do that to the highlights. So I like to do it now and then do something to bring back that detail in the highlights if I want later on in the workflow. So if you do sunshine like after a tone adjustment uh, then you you're kind of wrecking the highlights maybe and you won't be able to get them back so that's why i like to do the tone adjustments after the sunshine filter if that made any sense again i would go to the drop down and just hover now i don't usually care for glow and sun glow although glow looks pretty decent on this image natural i like radiance i usually like strong i like those three warm highlights i don't use much either sunshine i do too i just like radiance as i just glance at it so i would just use that preset and as I mentioned, I don't care for glow. It kind of does like an Orton effect with that glow. And I usually don't like that. Uh, so just my style. Um, I have used it though, but I usually don't like it. So there, I like sunshine. Now I did kind of blow out these highlights a little bit down here. See, there's uh, before and after. But I do like what it did to the trees and the cliff banks, right? So what I need to do now, in my opinion, is do something with these highlights. I want to bring a little detail back. So I'm going to add a filter and I'm going to go to Tone Enhancer. Now what I always do, and I don't know why I do it, because it never seems to work. I'll just do Auto right away. So I'll click there and just see if I like it. And 99 times out of 100, I go, oh, that's horrible. So I'll go over here and reset. Now again, like I did with the tone and color adjustment in the develop module, I'll look at my image and what does it need the most right now? Well, those highlights, I wanna bring back some detail down here. So I could zoom in. So I'll go to highlight slider and I'll pull this slider down. And like, you know, all the way down actually, I think and it worked. And so it brought some detail back in there. Um, I could add contrast here. I prefer to use the tone curve for contrast. And the actual, the image is pretty contrasty. Uh, but just so you know my regular workflow, I would often not use curves here. I, I could. I often will add the filter curves. But for this image, I don't think I really need to do that. 
Uh, there is a lot of contrast. If I want to tweak contrast, I'll just use this slider. Although I don't often use the slider. I just don't want to mislead you. So I will do that. I'll often then uh, hit the backslash key to do a before after. There's before after. You could also go down here where it has, says preview now. Click on it where now it says original before and after. Kind of see where I stand. All right. Now I mentioned that I like to do sharpening and or dynamic contrast later in my workflow. I usually do one or the other. I don't do both. I usually will try them both out though. So I will go to add filter and I'll do dynamic contrast. And right out of the bat, I kind of like it, but it's a little bit strong. Uh, this is one of those dynamic contrast and sharpening are, are two filters that if your eyes are fatigued, you're going to put it on too strong. And the next day you're going to look at the image and go, oh boy, what was I thinking? So you really should probably walk away from your computer for a while, rest your eyes, then come back and apply either dynamic contrast and or sharpening to your image then. Now, I don't have that luxury to go rest my eyes at the moment, so I'm just going to wing it. Um, I will do this natural. I will go to, the again, the presets. Grunts contrast I've never used in my life. Natural, soft I don't think I've ever used in my life. Uh, surreal, I don't use. So typically what I'll do is I'll go to natural. I may come in here and adjust the sliders. Like it looks like maybe the, the small detail might be a little bit too, too strong. Maybe it's even medium. Yeah, it's medium more so. But I'll reset those. What I most often do is just go to the opacity slider and keep pulling that down until I think it's uh, doing the effect I like. And I'll do a before afters a lot by just clicking on that little circle there. Just before, after. And I don't sharpen my images a lot. Uh, just my style. A lot of people do. A lot of times I'll see sh images, in my opinion, that are over, over sharpened. Uh, so there's before, after. Even that sharpened more so than I probably would want. Bring it down a little more. So then what I'll do. Okay. There's dynamic contrast. I kind of got that. I think that's pretty decent right there. There's or after. Okay, I kind of like that. Now, uh, what I'll do though is I'll turn it off and then I'll go to add filter and I'll go to sharpening. And again, um, I'll go to the presets. F fix focus uh, doesn't look good on this image. Usually again, I go for subtle. Uh, so there is screen. Now there's a lot of presets here. Uh, there's a lot of print presets. And even if you're not going to print your image, it doesn't mean you can't use one of the print presets. They're pre they're print presets in that name only. They're really doing some type of sharpening. And usually one I really like a lot usually is print matte. So I'll just go to that to save time. Uses an unsharp mask as the type. You can see if you click there, you have the three different types, high pass, progressive, and unsharp. I prefer the unsharp mask, generally speaking. I'm used to it uh, from Photoshop. So that's why I like it. So there's before, after. Um, almost not strong enough, really tell you the truth, before, after, uh, let's go back to screen, it's a little better on this image, there's before, after, I don't know if you could see it in the video, I'm hoping you can, there's, uh, before, after, before, after, okay, I kind of like that one, I think, a little better than dynamic contrast. So I'm going to just click the X to get rid of dynamic contrast. And even with this one, I'm even going to pull opacity down just a little bit. Okay. So far, so good. Now, what, really, when I was this, there, um, the sky wasn't that bright. So I think I want to add a local adjustment, a gradient filter. And I could click on the local tab over here. But I also could go over here right where it says local and click on this tool right there. So we're going to click there. We're going to go up to the top to the tool attributes. By default, it went to the brush. I'm just going to click on the gradient right there. All right. Now we could use a preset linear top, whatever. It doesn't matter. I just, I just click and apply the preset. And, and you can see I have exposure down. And it's affecting the bottom of the image. I don't want it to do that. So I'm just going to flip it just like that. Spin it around. And I'm going to have it a little bit crooked. I want it to go roughly along that tree line like that. You can see how it's making the sky a little darker. I can move it up a little bit. Oops, wrong button. I grabbed the wrong button. Here, let's straighten it better. There we go. Move it up a little. 
There we go. That's a little better. Uh, let's see if I add some structure up here. Kind of like that. Let's go to contrast. Yeah, that's the, the, it was raining actually uh, when I took the shot uh, very lightly where I was standing, but it was raining. You can see how the cliff walls are wet. Uh, so it was raining and the sky was very foreboding. And actually uh, there was a bolt of lightning right when I got out of my car. So I ran up here and took a few shots very quickly uh, to get this image and then went back to my car because I didn't want to get struck by lightning. So, um, that sky is, as it looks now, is more representative of what I saw when I was there that day. So I like that. Now, I want to do something with these cliff walls. They're kind of boring and they were very colorful and interesting when I was there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click on add adjustment. So I'm going to add another adjustment. This time we're going to go to the brush. This time I'm going to just temporarily put exposure up. And for the brush attributes, I'm going to leave feathering. I'll bring feathering up even more maybe around 75-ish. 74 is good. We'll leave opacity at 100. And I'm just going to come in here and paint on these walls a little bit. Like that. Now this side here is way too bright. Actually, that side on the right is good. So actually, I'm just going to undo this by hitting Command-Z. So I undid this brush stroke over here. So I have this brush stroke and there's a before after. Before, after. And I just like it like that. I think that looks pretty, pretty good. Now I could add another adjustment if I want. Add another local adjustment and I could come over here maybe and do this one slightly differently. Not dark like that, but we'll bring exposure up a little bit. See, not quite as high as the other one. Right, and we're going to bring um, saturation up. Touch on that one. Go back to this local adjustment. That's this one over here. And I'm going to bring saturation up on that just a little bit as well. I think that looks pretty darn good right there. So we've done local adjustments. I'm going to jump back over to effects. Let's do a before after. There's before and there's after. So you can see we've come a long way. Now I'm going to reevaluate my crop. I think it looks all right. I really do. I like. I wanted this tiny bit of water over here to be incorporated in the final version of the image. So I think that's fine. Um, I, I like it. I think, you know, the bottom of the river is almost right in the middle. It kind of leads us through the image. So I like that. Um, I'm just going to add a vignette. That's what I would do next. I'll go to add filter. I'm going to go to vignette. And again, I mentioned before, I usually just kind of try, um, Usually strong or big softy, sometimes subtle though. So subtle sometimes works. But there's strong, there's big softy. Um, I kind of like subtle for this. There's before, there's after. Before, after. I'm going to just off center it a little bit. Um, even though the image is kind of skewed left, it looks like because the. Um, the uh, vignette is skewed a little bit. It makes the vignette look darker on the right is what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to click right here to get this uh, tool to fit it to where I want. But I'm going to hold the shift key so I could drag it around. See how I could drag it. So I could best place it to my liking. I think just a little bit more to the right. Just like that. So there's before and there's after. And, you know, that's it. I think I'm done. There's a entire before outside of the crop. And there is after. There's before and there's after. Now, again, I want to stress, this is my workflow. This is the way I do it. Um, you may hate, hate this. Well, this is then, if you hate this, I just told you how not to do it. So look at it from that point of view. If you like it, great. See if you could incorporate some of this into your workflow. If you like parts of it, incorporate it in your workflow. See what works best for you. We're all different. We all like things different. Photography is subjective, not objective. If it was objective, I wouldn't do it because it would be so boring. Everyone would be doing the same thing. So again, try it. See what works for you. Again, in the description below the video, I'll have all the gear info, all the settings info, where I focused, where I drew exposure from. Uh, what my camera settings were, 
uh, all that stuff will be down there. Also be the be that promo code for my on one photo raw presets. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>